Hey guys, my commentary chat, here is Till, he's that Wing Chun fighter that we saw recently, and Till, welcome! Thank you! Thank you First, for having me! Till, I noticed you shaved that mohawk! Yeah, I did, oh, I did. Um, and tell me about that mohawk, was that kind of your signature brand for a while, or was that just your thing, just for that fight? I actually had this red mohawk for the last, I don't know, eight years or so? Mm-hmm. And uh, recently, I, I discovered that I'm probably going to go bad soon. So I shaved my head just to prepare. And mm. for the fight, I decided to go with the mohawk again. I see. Um, Makes sense. That's why it was so sharp, because usually it was like about this long. So that I makes just sense. started to grow it again then. <laughs> exactly. So let's talk about your Wing Chun journey. Did you start out at a young age training martial arts? Or did you discover it later on? Um, I started when I was about 16, I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, then I, I used to train quite a lot. And I actually, um, I was in charge of my own school when I was 20. So mm -hmm. my, my trainer then gave me her school because she, she stopped giving trainings. Um, but with my new trainer, I'm only for like three years, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with him, I, I really discovered a new way of practicing and, and, and fighting with Wing Chun. So in my in my Wing Chun journey, in the system that I like to use now, I'm really just starting. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's a very interesting topic too. So when you started out training at 16, was it a lot of sparring or was the sparring later on when you started this new system? Or was it both systems had good sparring? Um, funny enough, I did a lot more sparring in my, in my old school. Basically, um, both would be the same system. It's just that my, my trainer now has like, a, I'd say, a deeper insight of the system. So um, he, he's able to correct a lot of the mistakes that I, I used to make and that I got used to. I see. Um, but I, I did Mars sparring when, when I was like 16 to 20 or so. Mm -hmm. um, just because I was in a school with a lot of other students. And at the moment, it's just my trainer, me and sometimes other people. But ever for the last four years or so, I... Really, I have like maybe five sparring opportunities or so. So really, not that many. Which is as what I noticed in the fight and while fighting, like I really lack the sparring. I see. Um, yeah. I see. So what made you decide to go to that tournament and you know test out your wing chun? Was this something spontaneous, or did you eye that match for a while? Um, no, I, I eyed this kind of tournament for for the last year or so. So for I've been preparing for that specific. Um, fighting on grass with MMA rules um, for about a year, so mm -hmm. that was very, that was very interesting because um, I, I wanted to try the Wing Chun. I had like I had a couple of bras in the last couple of years, but you can't really train because a you're under a fuck ton of stress, no, and you don't you don't have a video, you don't you can't just say stop and then look at it, and it's just dangerous so I, I wanted to test it in like a bit safer conditions and mm -hmm. also um i wanted to which is why i went to the uh those i, I had three fights last year and i went to um the organizations that put the uh, video online because i i wanted to test it out and as a proof that when chung can be used for fighting if you train accordingly mm -hmm. and obviously as you as you said in in your in your commentary on, on the fight that's not normally the case. Like most Wing Chun videos, especially against modern combat sports that you see, it's just where well, they suck. Yeah. So I, I uh, kind of wanted to show that that can be different if you if you if you train for this. Like, yeah, exactly. And tell me about the lineage of Wing Chun, right? Because the video titled it Ving Sung, right? So is it a Vietnamese? Is it a Southern Chinese? Where was it originated from? Um, it, it is in uh, Ip Man line. Okay, I see. Um, so it, it goes from Ip Man to uh, Wang Xiong Liang. Oh, Wang um, Xiong Liang, that's Chilala. You know Chilala, I feature him on my channel too. Yeah, Chilala is yeah. a Wang Xiong Liang too. That's pretty cool. And then in, in Europe, you, you have like a few students of, of uh, Wang Xiong Liang that um, taught or st are still teaching. And uh, I come specifically from the uh, Barry Lee. He, uh, he's an Australian. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, my, my trainer trained with Barry Lee uh, mm -hmm. for a bit. And he uh, also trains with uh, Robert Vogel from um, the Netherlands, mm -hmm. who used to train with uh, with Barry Lee quite a lot. I see. So oh, yeah, that, 
that's still in it. I see. I got it. Cool. So I guess that clarifies things because, you know, sometimes you just never know the the way people spell Wing Chun varies, right? Like there's another yeah. video on Fight Club Lead where they spell it Wing Sung. <laughs> so <Yeah. it's> just... <laughs> I think I'm not sure how that is worldwide, but especially like in, in the German speaking countries, um, you have a you have a lot of problems between the different Wing Chun lineages. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard. <laughs> so the way you spell your Wing Chun really says a lot about your lineage. And so the, the uh, V and T lineages uh, in, in Europe are either um, just uh, Ip Man or specifically Wang Chun Leung. Oh, that makes that, sense. And, and I told him to spell it this way because for, for me, that is like, yeah, that is, that's the way my, my lineage uses it. You know, it's funny because, you know, we've had Silala on the channel, and then we have you. We seem to have two representatives of the Wang Shang Liang lineage that, you know, that really do well. So something about the Wang Shang Liang lineage is they train really well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, well, Wang Shang Liang was, was known to be to be a fighter. So I guess he, he trained his students according to that and not according. I mean, you can use Wing Chun as a as in, in a way of, like Tai Chi would be used or something where it's more about you and yourself and your own body and less about the fighting aspect. But the, the Wang Chung Leung lineages, in, in my opinion, are more about the fight or the self-defense. That mm -hmm. is. So let's talk about how you prepared for the fight. Knowing you were going up against an MMA guy, did you train any jiu-jitsu or was your ground training mostly Wing Chun based too? Um, we, we try to only use Wing Chun, my trainer wow. and me. So um, we, we try to get the, uh, as we, we didn't train enough on the ground, I'd say. So I definitely need to to uh, up my game there. But our goal was to use uh, the, the third firm, the uh, the beauty, um, because a lot of the movements, we, we figured that you can use them on the ground. You don't have to stand for them because it's like emergency movements. So I, I try not to go with the with the game that the MMA people like to like to use, because if they if they train it twice a week for a couple of years, I will always be worse than them. So I try to just well, my, my goal on the ground is to get up as yeah. fast as I can again. No. Yeah, exactly. It's really cool. What you said about how some of the forms you can interpret them and use them on the ground right i think a lot of karate is the same a lot of the forms in karate if you change the level use it on the ground you have different cool approaches too so it's really cool that you were looking at the third form being like okay how can we use this on the ground yeah exactly exactly wow that's so cool and you know this is the beauty this is why i have my channel i like seeing this stuff right there's a reason why all of that got codified in whether Tao Lu Kata, whatever we call it nowadays. It's yes, it's to kind of help you memorize, but maybe it was to kind of put a dictionary there for you to then go and say, okay, how do I apply this? Right? It's not just dancing. Like people who criticize practicing of Kata or Tao Lu or whatever, they forget that maybe there's more to it. And so I think talking to you, talking to um, Sensei Ando, a lot of it's okay, well, how do we pick apart what we can potentially rediscover in these forms? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, so it's so funny, too, that I've heard so much about the tensions among the Wing Chun community, especially in Germany. Like, there's another league that I cover. Um, it's sort of like Fight Club League, but um, they're a little bigger. It's called Defend FC. I, and I thought... I fought with them actually. I oh. had a fight. There, but they just didn't upload my video yet. Oh, um, okay. Was, so that's something to look forward to. You, we're, we have you on Defend FC too. Yeah, yeah. It was not. It was. It was the first fight I did last year, uh, and um, so I didn't really have that much sparring before. So I was really shown all of the mistakes that I need to to work on, and all of the little flaws that are not necessarily in the system that are more in me and in my training. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the fight was not the most um, interesting as it is. Um, but I, I, I fought and, um, well, yeah, I hope that they'll upload it. Yeah, I hope so too. It's, uh, yeah, because they have quite a few Wing Chun guys, right? So it's really yeah, yeah, cool to, wow, I didn't realize that you were there too. That's awesome. So I was going to ask you, the the Wing Chun people are on Defend FC are different lineage than you, right? I think. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I thought because it's spelled differently again. So. Yeah, exactly. exactly. 
Yeah, wow. one, one of them spells him, himself with a T and a Z, I think. And the other one is just the, the usual uh, WC. But I don't know. I, I think it as it depends on like on the league or on, on the organisers, what they will use. Because mm-hmm. obviously, as, as a Wing Chun person, you can tell him like, hey, I would prefer to have it spelled this way. But what they will do is, is their own business in the end. Yeah, exactly. So... Another question, just in general, your English is very good, right? Do most people in Germany speak English fluently? Is that the case? Um, I think fluently, yes, but I, I lived in Ireland. Uh, I oh, lived in Kirk. That's um, where that accent... I was like, it's not a pure German accent. No, 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 not at all. Um, no, I, well, yeah, I, I, uh, I did a student uh, language exchange year uh, when I was like 14 or 15 or so. Wow. So, um, yeah, p- picked up the accent there. That's pretty cool. And so that was before you did martial arts, right? So when you were in exactly. Ireland, you were just learning the language. Actually, um, that, that is one of the reasons why I started with Inchun, because on my on my last evening in, in, in Cork, uh, me and the, a few of the friends I had there, um, we, we went to a park and we got a, bit, uh, we got a little drunk. And we got mugged. At, and I, I got mugged at knife point. And I came back to Switzerland and I was like, okay, I... I I need to learn how to fight properly, uh, and then then I, I joined uh, I joined my my school. Wow, <laughs> wow! What? How many people mugged you guys? Was it one guy? Was it two guys? No, it was it was three people. Wow! And all of them had knives, or just one of them? Uh, as far as I can remember, only one of them. Oh wow! But, as I said, we we were just teenagers and we we're a bit drunk. So um, once the lads realised that. He had a knife. Everyone just kind of ran off, and I was I, I picked up a stick, and I was just standing in front of these three guys who are all like I don't know, not old, old, but all proper adults. And I had this stick in my hands, and I looked at him, and he just started running at me with his knife. And I was like, "Ah, fuck this!" Threw threw the stick away and just ran off as well. And then afterwards, I I, I felt so helpless. And after I realized, okay, I don't want to feel this helpless anymore, never again. So. Uh, that's why I, I started with Wing Chun. Then. Wow. Now, in your Wing Chun training, do you guys train with weapons at all or any type of weapons defense? Tell me about that. Um, I, I, in my old school, we used to do some some uh, basic knife defense stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not I'm not the biggest fan to be honest. So what we what we do in, with my trainer now, and um, what we do is the uh, is the long pole, and uh, the the butterfly sword. Mm-hmm. So we we train with those. Um, and I, I don't really train it, but I, I have a thing for, um, for like, uh, medieval swords. So I'm, I'm a fan of the, of those and I, I train with them a little bit, but just doing like, doing like some kind of farms just for myself. Um, but at the moment in Winchun, we, we focus more on the, on the fight. So focus more on go, me. I, I want to have more fight in MMA. So the main focus is that and as i said i'm not the biggest fan of, of knife self-defense stuff because we uh i asked the Krav Maga for for a while and even the like uh instructor certificate there and obviously you you train a lot um of, of defense against like weapons and once you give someone like a magic marker and tell him like okay now you really try to stab me even if you trained this specific block against a knife for like a week you will still end up with a few red or blue or whatever color you use dots on your on your t-shirt everywhere. So yeah. obviously you would have been stopped, yeah. or you would have at least been caught somewhere. So honestly, if, if if you encounter a weapon, you just you just try to run away, yeah. or you give if you're mugged, you just give them your wallet or whatever they want. Like yeah. it's just not worth it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's funny you talk about HEMA too. So. Um, is HEMA, I assume HEMA is pretty big in Europe, right? Since it's historical European. So there must be a big yeah. community that really likes that stuff. Yeah, there is. There is. And uh, a good friend of mine is is into HEMA. So I asked, I, I went to a tournament of, uh, of him and his brothers. And that was super interesting. So, and he, he showed me basically everything I know, like the, the movements I know with the start, he, show, he showed me. But... As I'm too focused on a Wing Chun trainer right now, I'm not really joining their training so I, I'd like to. Wow. But yeah, it, it's quite big, and it's not just uh, it's not just HEMA. There's also this uh, this thing called uh, Buholt, which is basically it's it's basically all right. I think their community will will rip me apart for this, but I think <laughs> it's 
kind of similar to HEMA, mm-hmm. but it's full contact. So you have the, it's it's not, it's it's like, it's they have the fights, they have the proper, like, they, they're full ironclad with proper swords and they, uh, often we have like something called um, medieval markets where it's like, it's like a fun fair, but just for medieval stuff. And um, there you have like fights of, of, 10 against 10 or 20 against 20 people in 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 like in full plate armor and with like obviously blunt swords but um that's pretty big in Europe and that that's brilliant to watch like it's 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 brilliant how they fight yeah i'm i realize i'm subscribed to one of these moonheart channels like you said yeah. but it just the youtube algorithm is so weird sometimes like i never get suggested their videos it's so annoying so what's the point of subscribing to them? Because when you search the Buhar, I'm like, I've definitely heard of it. And then I search it up, I'm like, I've subscribed to one of these channels, but I never get their videos. That's a shame. Yeah, it's a it's, shame. It's one. great, especially if, if you if you ever get to see it live, like just already the noise that it produces when you have like, when you have the sword hit and the shields or like the armor. And also it's interesting to see how they how they fight because often, obviously, if, if you have like a proper plate armor, the sword will not penetrate it. Yeah. So they use a lot of like, Buddy, they use a lot of like basic wrestling moves to get the other person to the ground because you want to to stab like into the face because or like underneath the helmet or wherever. So it's really interesting to see them fight because it's not like you'd expect it to be in, in a film where it's all about sword against sword because it's it's a lot of, of like catching the sword and then just ramming your opponent. Ramming, the yeah. It's it's brilliant. It's, it's really so great. funny because like you said if the person's fully armored, right, it's very hard to catch them in a spot that'll actually hurt them. So it does become, how do you take away their weapon and then also disable them through grappling, basically, and then stab them. It's so funny. Like, we have such a misconception about how medieval fights worked because, you know, swordplay is fun on camera, but, like, if everyone's armored, half the time they're literally just, like, pushing and, you know, like, it's like you have to change the way you think of how battles happen back in the day when they're lined up and fighting. They're not like, you know, it's like push, push, and grapple, drag. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Wow. And for people that do train combat sports, that type of fighting is actually very fascinating. But I guess for the casual, they don't understand it. So they're like, what is all this? Like uh, rubbing against each other. But, you know, for us, we're like, oh, look at the nuances of how you grapple in armor. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So you've had some success fighting MMA and you mentioned that you want to keep doing MMA. Is the goal to stay with Wing Chun and keep proving Wing Chun or do you want to incorporate other styles too? No, I'm I'm Wing Chun really is my passion. So mm-hmm. my my goal really was to just challenge my Wing Chun and and try try it out and try myself out and um as a, yeah, to, to prove that it can work if, if you train it properly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'll, I'll definitely stay with the side and keep keep training what, what I'll train. Mm-hmm. Uh, we Obviously, we adjust later parts in training, but we, we try to stay true to the art or to the line and the lineage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Now, you've been exploring Wing Chun for many years now. Obviously, we know there's probably a lack of real sparring in a lot of Wing Chun. Do you see any other weaknesses slash things you needed to overcome to get to your current point definitely there's there's lots um well the first obviously is is the lack of sparring and especially the lack of uh like like cross sparring sparring with other disciplines with other martial arts with other combat sparks um so you you have this kind of wing chun incest thing going on where if if you ever if the only sparring you have is with other Wing Chun people, especially in the same lineage, you will never know how to defend against the boxer that goes at you full first or mm. against anything else. So I think that is that is one of the big problems. And then it's, I don't know, I think, as of the, I, I try to abstain from the Wing Chun politics, um, mm. but in, in a lot of the Wing Chun schools I've encountered, I've, I've visited, um, training is to too easy it's not Mm -hmm. it's not like challenging enough um in my opinion it's too it's too much i touched you and this is good instead of trying to really go through it because if 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 i touch your nose a little bit with like with with my arm already straight and you walk around it you punch me in the face properly it 
I might have won the point, but I will still be unconscious and you won't. So um, I don't know, a lot of Wing Chun training for me um, is to, yeah, it's, 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 it's not hard enough for what yeah. it is. If, if, you want to, if you want to learn how to fight, if you want to just do a martial art for the sake of training your body and having fun and meeting your friends and all this stuff, it's great. But if, if yeah, if, if you want to learn how to defend yourself and also how to fight in like tournament situations, it's just not, training is not strict enough and it's not focused enough. And I think yeah. that is a lot of, a lot of trainers never really sparred with other people. So if you, if you only stay in the same school and system, obviously it it leads to it leads to false beliefs in in your superiority. Yeah, definitely. And so you know, I got braces now. So yeah. I've been doing capoeira, right? Because capoeira, at least the way we train in the U.S., usually we're not hurting each other too much. But I definitely see a lot of the same kind of parallels in a way. Even though you know, if you look at the history of capoeira. They were fighting off the Portuguese, you know, um, whatever they call colonizers, right? But, but like, as it sort of got more commercialized, they train it differently. So, like, capoeira is very much about just touch, right? Or you don't even touch; you pull it right before you reach the person. Yeah, so, yeah. so like, it definitely creates false beliefs. Like, you know, I've trained some Muay Thai, I've trained some boxing and stuff like that. But because I haven't sparred in a kickboxing way for a very long time. Even doing capoeira, I forgot about so many of that stuff. So, like, I had a Muay Thai guy just pressure me, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm back in, like, the point fighting thing that every wing chuck, every capoeira person, every karate yeah. person dealt with. Like, I was like, oh! <laughs> you know, like, and yeah, it's exactly. good to have those moments again because you don't ever want to be complacent. Even if you're just training martial arts, you got to know where you stand in things, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's – I. See, we talk so much about the sparring and all that, but the quality of sparring matters a lot too. And that's something I'm definitely um, reiterating from what you were just saying, because especially if you want to be a proficient striker, unfortunately, sometimes you have to have a little bit of non-light sparring, right? Don't do it too often, but you have to have it once in a while or else you're going to forget. Like, you forget both what it's like to be hit and also what it's like to hit through yeah, something. Yeah. And I mean, that, that, is, that is one of the things that you can see with almost every video of a Wing Chun person fighting against modern sparts, combat sparts. Like, you see him just... Do you see their opponent landing one punch in their face and they lose everything? They lose their basic structure, they lose they lose their hands, they lose everything because they've never been hit before. Yeah. Not properly. Yeah. yeah. And also if if I mean we, we train on the wild backs, not on the uh, on the on the sand uh, like on the heavy bags a lot. So you you kinda if you do it properly, you know you get the feedback of like hitting a solid thing. So you know how to maintain your structure and get it through. But to have that under like chat to still maintain that structure under stress is something completely different. Um, I, I think that's what you mean, no? It's yeah. you you kind of you kind of lose it, and then you you punch and you think like, well, something should have happened. Nothing does happen. <laughs> why do why why is he not even flinching? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think that that's a big that's a big problem for for a lot of the traditional martial arts where it's more about firms and um and like training skills instead of training as a just training like the the combat yeah, and the, the conditioning, the so to speak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Here's a question I think you always get in comment sections, and it's a fun question to ask you. Do you think the gloves that you wore interfered with your Wing Chun, or do you think maybe in some aspects it interfered, but in some aspects it helped? So tell me more about your thoughts on gloves and Wing Chun. <laughs> Um, I'm I'm not a big fan, to be mm -hmm. to be honest, uh, especially because I mean. Obviously, with the with the whole central line thing, um, you 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 can't you can't have your arms. Normally, what I, I try to do if, if I do my punches, I try to touch the skin of the of the forearm and the hand with every punch. So I try to slide. So you hear this, mm. thing. and with the gloves, you can't do this. So you have to have like a, a bigger movement thing going on here instead of having like this contact thing. Um, also. Obviously, they, they block the wrist. So a lot of the, the uh, open palm strikes, you can't really do because you can't really go like this too much because, you're well, you're, your wrist is just blocked a bit. Um, 
it's yeah, it's it's that, and well, you, you can't really you can't pull that well. You can't uh, you can't l- use uh, laps out as well as you would like to. Um, it's I think it's a, it's a training thing. If if you train your Wing Chun with gloves for long enough, you will get used to them, and they won't be a problem. But if you didn't train well enough, they will definitely interfere with it. Uh, but I I guess I would be the same if you trained like Western boxing or Engli- English boxing, and you would just never you would train it like the old fashioned way without gloves, and you would never have been introduced to gloves, and then suddenly you have to fight a match with gloves. They would fuck with your with your abilities yeah. until you trained it a little bit, and then it would work. Yeah. Um, I, I guess that's the same for everyone. Like it doesn't really matter the style. Obviously, when Chun with the whole central line thing and with a lot of open hand stuff, it does it, it does pose a problem, and it did definitely for me. So that is one of the one of the lessons I learned. I I need to train Mar with gloves. I need to spar with gloves. Yeah. Um, yeah. And a common counter that a lot of people try to use against Wing Chun, which your opponent in that fight we analyzed, he tried hooks, right? Of course, he was too telegraphed with his hooks. Yeah. But a lot of times, because Wing Chun people are so focused on the center, they forget about the arc of the hooks. So Definitely. how do you guys kind of deal with that kind of stuff? Um, well, we, we we try to train a lot with um, surprise surprise hooks. Like my, my trainer tries to um, to surprise me when we do drills. We uh, often do drills where we, we have like the normal Wing Chun drill that suddenly he'll just throw a couple of hooks. Uh, he, got, he got better at his boxing game obviously in in training me because well he, he just had to up it and what i would try to do is um i would still try to maintain my uh, my center line and a what i would try to is um i'd go for for like this balance in my opponent so the hooks will not be as strong so mm. i mean it, when you have the theory that a straight line will always be faster than like a curved line so if we're both exactly the same speed and we start at exactly the same time. My straight point will hit you before your uh, hook hits me. But in reality, that's just not the case. Because in reality, well, you just point a little bit faster than me, you'll still hit me. So I, well, we just have to train to um, be focused also on the surrounding, like the surrounding of the center line, um, adding more pressure to the body and not just like what I did in the fight, just the stacking, but actually pressuring the, um, the center line of the opponent and um, disbalancing him so the hooks won't be as strong but as it just realizing okay i need to get better at my my blocking basically like my my block game for the outside just needs to get better yeah it's such an important thing you said because it reminds me of when Conor McGregor knocked out Jose Aldo, right? People yeah. forget that Jose Aldo's punch actually did hit Conor McGregor too. But Conor yeah. McGregor hit him better and knocked him out. And so yeah. I'm sort of getting that from you. It's like, well, because we're focused on that straight, I might be able to hit him first. And I've, I can off balance if maybe his hook will still hit me, but it's not going to be as strong. So I never thought about that approach. But yeah, that makes a lot of sense. If you can hit him hard... And you hit him first, and you off-balance him enough, maybe his punch won't hurt you, even if it does reach you. But like you said, there's other counters, like maybe you work on your block, and you maybe even adopt this, you know? There's other yeah, things, yeah. but even that, yeah, like, the force-to-force force kind of metric that you gave me, it's something really interesting that I've never thought about. I think for, for me, it's both. What we what we try to what we try to uh, tell, like, um, students, and what I try to train is that if, if I counter a hook punch with a block and a punch, um, I try to emphasize uh, more power on the punch than on the block. Mm-hmm. The block, block is here to protect me, but if the punch is very well executed, it will get some strength from my opponent or against my opponent, so his hook will just not be as strong. Yeah. So you try to have both. You, know, you try to block it, and yeah. you try to have your counter punch just strong enough so his hook will never reach its full potential, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's that's... A point. you will be hit. That's yeah. just that's just the deal. Like I, I, I never saw a fighter that has just never been hit. It yeah, just yeah. exists. So you can have you. It, it depends on the quality of of the hit. Like yeah, yeah, and uh, the quality of the hit, and then the quantity, right? So if you get hit yeah. once with a hook, but you hit them six times in return, that's a pretty good exchange. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Wow. So, okay, um, do you have plans to move beyond Germany and 
fight in other leagues or anything like that? Tell me more about that. Um, I would probably like to go back to uh, Defend FC. Mm -hmm. if, um, well, if, if they upload my fight, that is. Maybe um, since I'm in touch with Aslan sometimes, I should ask her too. Hey, Aslan, I just interviewed Till. Can you upload his fight? <laughs> sure. Why not? Go ahead. Yeah. Because, you know, Defend FC has that really cool Capoeira guy. It'd be so cool to see you yeah. versus the Capoeira yeah. guy. <laughs> no, that, would, that would be brilliant, yeah. Yeah, but because like... Capoeira usually can't take the forward pressure, right? So our Capoeira guy has to be able to take that forward pressure from you. So yeah, it would yeah. be a really cool clash of styles because Capoeira is very deceptive and circular, but you are very forward. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> quite interesting. Yeah. So as long as, you know, I'm just predicting, which of course every fight's different and it's unpredictable, but as long as you don't get caught by it at the end range of his kicks, you know, just keep moving in. He's going to have a tough yeah. time. He's going to use jujitsu on you basically. So it's going to turn into a jujitsu match. <laughs> Uh, if if he's any good at jujitsu and it's going to be a jujitsu match, I'll probably lose. Mm. So I'd probably try to not get in too close. Yeah. Because if if like if if a proper jujitsu fighter grabs you and gets to grab you properly, you're fucked. Yeah. Like if you yeah. don't know your jujitsu well enough. Um. But to return to your question, like I I'd like to fight with them again. So I think this year I'd uh, try to do the same way I did last year, like mm. having those um. MMA tournaments in in like public park uh, sort of thing, but there is one uh, there is one tournament in uh, the city of Basel in Switzerland that I I quite I I I am from there originally. Mm -hmm. I quite fancy to to uh, fight there, and ever since um, MMA was illegal in France up until like three years ago or so, I think, or maybe four years ago, something like this. Um, this tournament because Basel shares uh, shares the border with uh, with France. Oh. Um, this this tournament there is a big thing for for the French MMA fighters. So I've I've been to the tournaments a couple of times just just as a as a visitor and a spectator, and they they have some quite high quality fighters. Like mm -hmm. it's it's quite interesting, and it, it it's indoors like in in a cage and the proper the proper MMA thing. And if if I have like a few more fights, I think I'd I'd like to uh, to apply for a fight there and see if 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 they'll have me. I see. So you are Swiss German, basically. You're Swiss, exactly it. Yeah. Swiss yeah. German. I see. Yeah, I, I knew Swiss Germans. So it seems like just knowing what you're talking about, Switzerland, even though Switzerland's a smaller country, the people there are pretty hardy, huh? It looks like like people in Switzerland. I mean, because like France banned MMA, but MMA was in Switzerland. Like we we think of Switzerland as like chocolate, you know, in America, we think of Switzerland yeah. like chocolate. But this, you know, because you guys have that kind of neutrality thing for so long like you guys are like no don't mess with us type of mentality right we forget that yeah I, i'm not i'm not too keen on the whole uh nation state thing so i guess switzerland as as like a nation state those try to have that mentality mm -hmm. but honestly in my opinion the biggest mentality in switzerland is just well give us your money and leave us alone with your <laughs> yeah yeah basically <laughs> that's just well, that, that's the country. Like, yeah. the, the people are quite diverse, as it is. I'd yeah, say. it makes sense. The The reason I took an interest in Switzerland is also, I love dogs. And you know, yeah. the Bernese mountain dog, that's a Swiss dog, yeah, right? Sure. People yeah. here in Santa Monica, you know, Santa Monica, where I live, is a small city. You shouldn't yeah. be having Bernese mountain dogs. Like, these are dogs that should be, like, doing work in the mountains and stuff. So, like, these Bernese mountain dogs end up getting so fat because it's like they're just that's lazy cool. here in, in a city. It's really funny, but they're cute. They're cute dogs. So, like, people love getting these burners, but they end up getting so big and yeah, fat. Yeah, they're big with the with the amount of fur they have. They're big as it is, no. Yeah. Even yeah. without being fat, like they're they're, they're fluffy, big, tennis yeah. big. And if you don't have them, you know, carrying carts or you know doing manual labor, they're gonna yeah. blow up like really big. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So okay, so it sounds like you split your time between Switzerland and Germany. Kind of is that your your life now, or do you yeah. mostly are you mostly in Germany? And I'm I'm mostly in Switzerland actually. Oh. Um, like my my mom's from Germany, but I recently I've just been to Germany for the fights really. I see. Um, I, I I live and train in Switzerland, so it's just that in Switzerland you have like this this one organization that those fights like uh, like um, uh, Defend FC and Fight Club League do. So there's just this one, and I, I asked them to have a fight there uh, last spring already, and it took quite a while for them to find an opponent because. Yeah, well, Switzerland is super small. 
So mm. Germany has like something like 80 million inhabitants and Switzerland has eight. Mm. So obviously you have like a 10 times higher chance to find someone that wants to fight in Germany than you have in Switzerland. Exactly. So I, I did have a fight there um, in, in Aachen as well, but it's just this, this one organization. So I was kind of forced to go to Germany. Uh... Not that I disliked it, but I, I kind of had to, to, to find an organization that would have me. Yeah. Is that Swiss match on YouTube also? Are we able to find that one? It also has not been uploaded yet. Oh right? man, we got we need to we need to get these organizations to upload your stuff, man. Because people yeah. are like, Jerry, you're always only showing Tilala. I'm like, I want to show other people, and if we got more Till stuff, I would love to show more Till stuff. So it looks like we need to like email all these organizations, be like, please upload Till stuff. Go on. I I already asked them. I I didn't get any any. Uh answer to that yet mm -hmm. um i don't know what, what's up so their their organization is called uh, helvetia combat oh, um, i've helvetia. heard about them or combat helvetia it is oh i didn't um, realize they're swiss yeah, i'm actually in touch with them oh uh, really yeah they're oh they're i put two and two together yeah i'm in touch with them yeah. like they said i can commentate their stuff too that's pretty small world i finally understand where they're from there's their swiss german league okay i got it yeah i'm in touch yeah. with them that's why they're called uh, Combat Helvetia because they they wanted to have like CH as an uh, abbreviation because that is like the 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 code for Switzerland. It's uh, ah. Helvetia Helvetia is Switzerland basically. Uh, it's just the 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 Latin way of saying it. I see. Um, so yeah, I, I had a fight there as well. Wow. Um, they told me they upload it quite soon after. It hasn't happened yet, but I, I guess it will at some oh. point. But yeah, well, if, if, if you're so we got two to follow up on. We I'll message Combat Helvetia. I'll tell them I talked to Till. So probably what I'll just I'll upload this talk and then I'll I'll reach out to Defend FC and Combat Helvetia. I'll be like, hey, do you guys have a fight? Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you know, Silala is like the Taiwanese Till, and you're the German Swiss German Silala. So this is really cool. We just need an American version now. We need someone in America. <laughs> Because the issue with Wing Chun is just, man, the smack talking is just so annoying. And I just, yeah, I don't like to partake in it either, right? It's just like, I just want to show people who actually want to test it out. And it's like, the excuses are just endless. Like, there's this yeah. Wing Chun school, not too close to me, but I could drive there if I wanted to. And their excuse is always, yeah, we have MMA guys coming to our school all the time and we're always beating them. I'm like, oh, you, give me, so you give me footage or I don't believe you, you know? Exactly, exactly. Jesus Christ. And that's what I heard from every school. Well, I had my couple of fights. Like, I did street fights when I was young. Every fucking Sifu or whatever trainer they call themselves, everyone has those stories, but no one has any any proof for anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, that that's one of the reasons why we are the joke of the martial arts world, or at yeah. least of the combat sport world, because, well, we are. Yeah. Like, yeah. If we can't prove that what we're doing is is any good, then it isn't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I remember I had this one Wing Chun guy. He was trying to show me some of his like secret stuff that he learns in his branch, right? And I think back on it, and some of it was just so cringe. Like he was trying to yeah. show that they kind of have more of a boxer guard, anyways. But the way he was showing it, because he was trying to interpret it with the center line. He was square to me with the boxer guard moving around. Like, shit like this is like, I I guess he, he thought, I mean, at that point, I was very open-minded. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to listen. I'm going to think about it later. But I'm just like, I think about, especially that, like, he was showing me like, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? This is, this is your, your art will beat boxers and stuff. No, it's not. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Especially. I, but I get I get the whole boxer thing because honestly for me as a Wing Chun uh, as a Wing Chun practitioner, the um, most dangerous opponent, well, obviously standing on the on the ground, obviously Jiu Jitsu just has the game, but in 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 like in like stand up fight it it is boxers yeah, yeah. because boxers feel like confident and happy at the same range that I feel happy at like this this whole having the uh, having this like short distance in fight thing a boxer feels very happy to go into an in fight situation yeah. whereas a lot of the other sport or, or uh, martial arts try to have like a big bit of a bigger distance to use their blocks or to use their counter punches but every time I sparred with boxers and this is usually when, when I spar with other people um, as soon as I 
get to go into an in-fight distance, I, I have to upper hand just because, well, this is how we train, basically. But with a boxer, he just kind of smarks at you and just throws a sharp hook and he hits you. Yeah. So I get why Wing Chun people try to... to show that they get a little bit of the boxing as well but it just doesn't work like yeah. either you stick with what you're doing and you try to to make it better or you go to boxing if you like yeah. to box no yeah it's really funny this is something so important that i was talking with some of my other viewers about because if you try to start tweaking your wing chun then it just becomes jkd right so like yeah, exactly. you have to you you have to be careful because I knew a guy, he was one of these like cringe wing chunk guys, and I gave him a chance, man. I really gave him a chance. But he was basically trying to adopt kickboxing and boxing into his wing chunk, and it was so yeah. cringe. It was so cringe because he obviously didn't understand boxing and kickboxing, and he didn't really understand wing chunk on top of that. So it was just, it looked like bad JKD. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, this is, and I'm really glad we talked about this because, you know, like there's a lot of, smack talk Wing Chun people who are like, oh my God, it should never look like this. But what was really impressive about what you did is you made this work, right? And so like some people would argue, oh yeah, I mean, Wing Chun should never look like this in, in the, and it's like, well, but then aren't you just doing JKD if you're just looking like a boxer and fighting like yeah. an MMA guy? But I mean, well, there's, there's the one thing that you said when, when you commented on my fight is 90% of Wing Chun people will go like, this is not a proper Wing Chun just look. <laughs> so you will always have that, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I think Wing Chun, like, as, as every other martial art, you have your way of moving and everything goes together. Like, my stance and the way I walk and the way I kick goes along with everything else. So maintaining the structure goes with the center line, goes with having the elbows on the inside. So if you if you try to mix it, it well, you can do you can do, might work, like, but then you're not doing wind tune anywhere. Yeah. And I guess it's it's the same with everything. If you if you try to if you try to suddenly use something else, like if if I suddenly decide that my elbows should not be in the middle, but they should be here mm -hmm. and I should move like this, like a boxer, then I should ask to move my legs like a boxer. I should not remain in my Wing Chun stance because those things just don't go well together. They just yeah. don't because boxing, there's a reason why you jump around and you have all this little movement and all this height because it works because yeah. it is, this here goes together with the way I move in my upper body, goes together with how I'm dancing with my legs. If if I try to have like this 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 weird mixture stuff, it, it yeah, as you say, it's just cringe. It like it never works. It just yeah. looks shit. Yeah, exactly. So I think another conclusion with our talk is just if people look like how you stereotypically think of Wing Chun people, it's okay. Don't yeah. say, oh, yeah. you're not supposed to look like that either. It's like, I never thought the Wing Chun world would like smack talk both sides. Like the people who try to incorporate a little bit of Wing Chun and then try to make some of that work, they're like, oh, but they're not really doing Wing Chun. And then the people who really look like Wing Chun, they're like, oh, they're just like making some frames. They're not really doing Wing Chun either. Yeah, like, yeah. Can you just like, maybe this is another thing. Like this is goes back to the smack talking between all the lineage and stuff. We need to define what is Wing Chun and maybe like there's never been really a definition because unfortunately we had all those Ip Man movies and those became the yeah. definition of Wing Chun basically. I think it also, I mean, different lineages will define it differently. Yeah. And that's actually okay. Like if the, if the, uh, Leung Ting lineages have this more softer way of moving and the going away, it doesn't work for me. I, I've never, I've never met someone trained with someone where I could see like, okay, yeah, this will work against a boxer. But it's a different they they would they would say it's different like as as other Wang Xing Leung uh, students already have it different to to what Barry Lee did um so I I that's okay like I'm not sure if you can find like this one definition but there are some some car principles that I think everyone can agree on and I guess if you want to do Wing Chun you should follow them otherwise yeah as as I said I think otherwise if, if you don't want to follow the like the car principles why not just be a good boxer then yeah, because I yeah. mean there's there's so many other martial arts and, and combat sparrows to choose from. So if, if you don't like the way Wing Chun works, then just don't fucking train it. Yeah, exactly. But I, I also have to think, it's, it's interesting that you said um, that I, I made it work because I, I won the fight, yeah, fair enough, but I'm not too happy with, with what I did. Like, there's so many things. I, I looked at the fight, like, obviously, hundreds of times, probably to uh to analyze it and to to learn from uh, the little mistakes i made and everything and there's so many things that i realized okay yeah 
you you can see that the Wing Chun, like there's definitely like the, the car principles, as I said, you can see some of them. Um, and I did kind of make it work, but a lot of the stuff at the moment, a lot of my training is really aimed at getting rid of a lot of the uh, the stuff that I did there in the fight, basically. Yeah. And also, it's what a lot of the stuff is what not really nice Wing Chun. So as I said, I, I did uh, I did Kaf Maga for for quite a while. And um, as I, I, I don't think it's a very good fighting system for, for like tournaments because it, it isn't it isn't designed to be. It's designed to be a self-defense system. And for that, it is brilliant in the aspect that it really uses your natural instincts and just tries to make them a bit better. So your natural instinct of something coming to you is you go away with your body, uh, your head or with your body. And if something comes from here, you will try to block and cover so you use a lot of like the shoulder movements and this this way of moving your your body, which is something that you should really not do in Wing Chun. Like you should have like your your straight upper body. You should have like your straight line, and not use the shoulders like for 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 weird movements. But you should you should try to remain your uh, you stay in your posture. So I can see the Kaf Maga in what I do, uh-huh. and this is kind of. The mixture I talked about, it doesn't really work. Like a Wing Chun punch can be very powerful if you execute it well in the Wing Chun way. But if you execute it with like your shoulder, Mm -hmm. it will not be well. It will not be good. It will not be strong. And you will open up your center line with it. And under the stress that the fight put me in, um, I could see a lot of like the the instinctual uh, things from Kaf Maga Mm -hmm. that I just went into. Like I still try to stay in the Wing Chun system, but... A lot of the movements and the small, the small movements and small things I did, I would say are not proper. Mm. So a lot of my training at the moment is trying to um, get my stress level high and still stay completely in the Wing Chun system and make it more natural. So I don't just suddenly go like away with my head because my head should stay here. Like if I want to evade a punch, my whole body should move, not just my head, because with the movement of the head, suddenly my center line thing doesn't work anymore. It could if I was a boxer, like I could go away with the head and then come back, but I am not. So with the Wing Chun stance, with the as I said, with the Wing Chun stance, the boxing will not work and the Kaf Maga will not work. So if I want to stay with the Wing Chun, I just have to get stricter at the training and then make it work better. This is fascinating. And I definitely am really excited to see where this evolution, this kind of challenging your paradigm and improving goes. So I think this is, I'm, I'm really impressed. Also, like your your self awareness, right? Your humbleness, like you, you you can see things that even though you won the fight, like you said, you can still see things you can improve on, and that's awesome. That's just like that's that's a martial artist right there. So this it's really really awesome hearing you talk about that. And I think exactly. what we exactly. should do is once those two fights get uploaded from those two leagues, and then once you have more fights, let's definitely have these conversations often. Like I talk to Tilala almost every week. So like, um, we don't have to record these, but let's definitely stay in touch whenever. And I would love to hear your thoughts on, you know, as you progress into the fighting game and stuff like that. I love that. Uh, I'd like to add one more thing. Um, Mm -hmm. In in the, uh, in the video you uploaded of my fight, uh, my opponent has been trash talked so badly. And I really like really badly. And I really have to say, man, the guy did well. He apparently he was he was ill uh, like uh, just before the fight, so which is why he was out of breath so quickly. Mm-hmm. As he gained like ten kilos over the last year, so it his normal fighting weight is like something like below eighty or so. Mm-hmm. So he went over like I'm I'm at the moment I'm like ninety one or so, mm-hmm. um, or ninety two kilos something like this. So he was fighting way higher than his normal weight level is, and. He was just, he encountered a fighting style that he has never encountered properly yeah. before. Like he, he was, he wasn't really sure what to do with the whole center line. Okay, here it's blocked. Every time I try to throw a hook, something comes through the middle. How do I offend against it? And he did super well. Also, he was, we had a nice time together. After our fight, we sat next to each other, shared a banana, watched the other three fights that were happening that same afternoon. Wow. And honestly, he, he was he was doing pretty well. Like, obviously, in the end, you could see he was out of breath. He was just trying to throw his hooks with his entire body, which is when he fell down almost. But, man, he wasn't bad, honestly. Yeah. And all the, all the people that trash talk him, yeah. I've never fucking seen videos of them doing MMA. So maybe, well, you know you know how it is. There's yeah. trash talk, maybe just prove themselves instead of just doing that. 
And I'm really name. glad you mentioned this. I'm really, and I'll leave a pinned comment to let people know that, you know, the opponent was sick and then even till you really enjoyed and, you know, felt like it was a good challenge. So it's good to get your perspective. So right after this talk, even before I upload it, I'll make a pinned comment because yeah, the comments were so surprising. A lot of these MMA fanboys, even the Wing Chun fanboys were like, oh, he did a good MMA fan. It's just like, come on, dude. Like, you don't know what, you don't know what his training was like. There was one comment, he like, he said a lot of inappropriate stuff. So it didn't actually even, make it onto yeah. the video yeah. but i saw it in the filter right because i see all the okay. bad comments and then he, he the guy was like uh, besides cursing and everything he's like oh this guy just did like a one week trial for mma it's like no he didn't come on dude you obviously haven't trained mma that's why you say that man the man the man has been fighting ever since he's like 15 or so he has he has he, he has some one fights that he won like there's there's proof like you can there's uh, it's not in fight club league but there's like videos of him winning fights in the mm -hmm. first 20 mm -hmm. seconds or so by straight mm -hmm. knockout like he's not he's not a bad fighter he mm -hmm. he didn't obviously it was not his best performance i'd say but this is why this is because he was out of breath so quickly yeah. and yeah. As I said, like if if he's fighting against another MMA person or against another boxer, like he can move yeah. and he's strong. Like he he packs it he, in the video. You can see once he he hit me once where my head goes down a little bit and he didn't knock me out obviously because I was still standing. But I could feel his punch. Like he he wasn't doing bad. He mm -hmm. so it's it's really yeah. I I really wanted to 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 say that again because Jesus Christ, I've I've read the comments a couple of times and. Man, he he wasn't as bad as yeah. people make him to be. I eventually, so the way I have the comment setting, I don't even get notifications. The only yeah. type of comment I see are the ones that potentially might be good, but the filter blocks it, right? So like right. the, the right. ones that already got approved, I didn't see. So I'm sure if you read through all the comments, you would have been like, man, the YouTube community is so toxic. Yeah. I purposely yeah. shield myself from it. I don't read those. <laughs> Yeah. Honestly, for me, it was really nice to read the comments because a lot of them were really seeing like how well Win Chun performed, how well I performed. So that was that was nice to read. But on the other hand, really, it, we we were quite evenly matched. It's just that I I wasn't out of breath when he was, and that is, but that is something to say. Even if he if if he wouldn't have been ill, I think that is something to say about the the uh, Win Chun system and how efficient it is to move that way because. We don't prance around, we don't jump around, we don't have all those movements that can be very effective, obviously, because they are there for a reason. Like they, they evolve to be how they are for a reason. But when you evolve like this for a reason as well, and one of the reasons is you can't be quite lazy and still do Wen Chun because you don't have to jog every day for like two hours because you, you try to, you tr obviously, you try to maintain your posture and you try to. As I as I did stalking if if necessary, but you don't try to move your body in unnecessary ways. So you really try to be as efficient as possible, which is why I wasn't out of breath. Because well, if my movement is this and then back, and the movement of a boxer will be this and that and this and that, obviously you have to have a way higher level of fitness to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, you know, I know you and I could probably talk for another hour. So this is great. Um, I will end it here just because we let's, let's like come up with like a schedule where we could talk like every two months or something like that, because I can tell you and I, if we lived in the city, we'd be hanging out all the time and I can tell. Yeah. So, yeah. So everyone, this is Till. I will leave both his fight and his social media when I upload this. So Till, I might upload this on a few platforms, so we'll see, but, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. this will be cool. this was great and yeah until i really appreciate you reaching out to me and then shout out also to fight club lead for also reaching out to me yeah, so yeah. this was great i'm i'm really happy that all these leagues in germany and they really like my channel even combat helvetica which or helvetia which i haven't commentated yet they like yeah. my stuff too so yeah i'm really excited to keep covering this stuff because at a certain point in my life, I realized, okay, I'm not going to cover UFC the way Joe Rogan does, right? That's not what yeah, my brand yeah. is. I want to find these cooler leagues that you can take yeah. more risks in. Like, you know, some Wing Chun fighter probably will never want to go into UFC because it's like, if I get embarrassed, I will forever be talk shit about. But like, yeah. <laughs> people will want to start with some of these other leagues and they can build themselves up this way. Yeah. 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 As a try themselves out without being professional athletes.
Yeah. Like just because you, you want to do it for fun, you train a couple of times a week. You don't want to devote your entire life, every second of it, to the sport. Yeah. So yeah. it's good that they do this. And absolutely, yeah. For like Club League, they have they have been very professional. It has been a pleasure to to be there. Like that mm. was it was great. That's great. That's awesome. awesome. Next next time, uh, as you say, you, you like that's next uh, next time I'll uh, introduce you to my dad then. Oh, that'd be so cool. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. So guys, uh, this was Till. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. Brilliant. Thank you for having me.